What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and today is a mixed tier battle. Uh, I had this against Trainer Connor. Mixed tier, uh, I think um, I think Robotnik is sexy pointed out in one of my video comments that that seems to be my favorite tier. Just bringing a little bit of everything and that, I, I don't know, I just have the most fun when I kind of grab random things. I did think it was funny, if you look at the teams, Connor and I both brought, um, we both have a Grasswater Fire Core with Entei and Florges, and we even chose the same Florges uh, form, so interesting there. Most notably on my side of the field, uh, Assault Vest Gudra, Kadaro the Blastoise is a specially defensive Blastoise. We have Mega Aerodactyl, my physically defensive Chestnut, Offensive Max Speed Max Special Attack Florges, and uh, Charcoal Entei. I really like using Charcoal on Entei because he bluffs Choice Band very, very well. Of course, Assault Vest is becoming a little bit more popular now. But um, without access to the Sacred Fire Entei, it's a little bit difficult to, to find moves to fill the, the slots there, mainly because I hate running Stone Edge on Entei. I miss that move way too often. Um, Florges can actually sweep through his team. If I can get rid of his Entei, Florges can basically KO everything else that he has there. I'm not really worried about Flygon, because Chestnut basically switches into it for free. He could use Outrage, but if he uses Outrage, then I can switch into my focus. So I decided to start off with Gudra because I can hit everything on his team. And he U-turns right away. I didn't, I, typically in the beginning of a match, I'm not going to overpredict, so I just went straight for Ice Beam. I didn't want to go for a Dragon-type move, of course, because he does have Florges, which he does end up bringing in. Very nice being in the end of Dragon. And here I have the coverage. Why not use it? He switches back out into Flygon and I just went for Sludge Wave. So now he's here. He used U turn last time. So I'm thinking, well, the only way he could KO me is, is if he went for Outrage. And I don't think he's going to do that because I have Forges. But he just goes for Outrage. So I lose my Udra really early. But he loses his Flygon, which was one of the few things on his team that could really check my Forges. So Forges just comes in and blows Flygon away with a Moon Blast. I can't leave Florges in against Entei if I want to use it later on, because Florges will get wankated by Flare Blitz. He nicely predicts my switch, which was a little bit obvious there, I couldn't risk that. Bringing in Blastoise on the Stone Edge, I take quite a bit of damage from that, but keeping in mind that I'm a specially defensive build, I actually took that pretty well in my opinion. So I actually thought he was going to go out into his floor just expecting me to maybe um, uh, go for top, uh, I don't really know. I expected four just to come in, which is why I went for Toxic. But, um, with Ivysaur in here, I decided to go out in the Chestnut just to dodge Sleep Powder and Leech Seed. And it turns out that I completely wall a set because his only offensive move is, is Sludge Bomb, which, of course, Bulletproof blocks that. So, this is just a great opportunity to set up some spikes to help weaken his team to allow for four just to sweep later on. When Floor just does come back out, I know that my Chestnut can take a Moonblast, but I don't want it to, necessarily. Uh, and so I decide to switch into Entei to take the resistant hit there. Entei takes that very, very well. And he just goes for Protect Scouting to see what I'm going to do. Again, I want to bluff the Choice Band here. I could switch up moves, and I even carry Will-O-Wisp on this Entei. I have quite a few of the Shiny Enteis because Extreme Speed is just so very nice on Entei. So I have quite a few with different EV spreads. I really need to change one of them over to a Salt Vest though, that would be fun. Um, and actually, Flare Blitz does a good amount of damage to his Entei as he switches it in. Um, interestingly, our Entei's threaten each other, our Entei's threaten each other a lot. So, we need them. That was such a weird set of phrases. Anyways though, I'm gonna predict that I can take 
maybe I really should have brought physical Blastoise to this battle. But I actually managed to take two Flare Blitz. Unfortunately, the second one burns me. But that means I get to take him with me. So Kadara, he didn't take a single special hit this entire battle. And you still were able to take, I think that's four physical hits, I think. So good job there. And you would have lived if you hadn't gotten that 10% burn chance. So that's a pretty good day, I think. But that's neither here nor there. He on the double down. Ooh, ooh. We haven't had a double down in a while. I, that's, that, those are the best types of downs. Anyways, though, on the double down, he went out to Clawitzer. I went out into Chestnut, predicting him to go out into Cla Clawitzer. And that works out. He goes out into the Ivysaur as a pivot switch just because while he can't do much to me, I can't really damage him. But that just means I get to set up spikes. I, we can stay in here all day and I will get more done setting up my spikes than Ivysaur will get done attacking my chestnut. So he does go back on the floor, just this time I am going to stay in because I want to put his floor just in a range where my floor just can revenge kill it. So um, an uninvested seed bomb, I don't think this chestnut has any attacking EVs at all. I don't think so. So that did a lot of damage which proves that he's probably actually an offensive floor just as well since floor just with max HP investment can actually take hits relatively well. Um, expecting uh, Moonblast, I went out in the Entei, but he surprises me and goes for Wish. This is pretty important because if I had just stayed in the Seed Bomb again, he'd be KO'd. So that was definitely a ballsy play, but now he gets to get his floor just back up to maximum health. Uh, my floor just actually don't run Protect on this. Energy Ball, Moonblast, Psychic, and Wish. Because uh, it tends to force a lot of switches. But as you see right there, Entei is able to one hit KO floor just even at full HP. Which is exactly why I did not leave my floor just in on his Entei earlier. I just I haven't had that face off before, but I kind of had an inkling that's how that would end up there. Um, here I actually took a long time to decide. I want I was trying to decide if I wanted to go for extreme speed for the neutral damage, or go for flare blitz and have it be resisted by his mega Ampharos. And I decided on flare blitz just for the off chance that I burn him. Also, it's boosted by charcoal, so I have a chance of the burn. And after the charcoal boost, I will be doing similar damage. Um, yes, with recoil, but I wasn't expecting to live the turn anyway. And so I was just able to put him in a range where Fortress could very easily come in and finish him off with Moon Blast. Now here he finds out that I have Energy Ball. If I didn't have Energy Ball, he probably would have been able to live a Moon Blast. Clawitzer is relatively bulky, but that's why the coverage is there. And also I have Psychic for Ivysaur, so we have a little. I think Floor just got. Four KOs this battle. Ivysaur, Clawitzer, Flygon, um, Ivysaur, Clawitzer, Flygon, Ampharos. Yeah, four KOs. Good job, Forges. That was that was a good exhibition of Forges there. It definitely shows some offensive potential. But thank you all for watching this battle. If you have not already, be sure to check out my uh, overview series that I'm going to start up. It actually already started yesterday. Um, I will be going through all the megas stats, the new moves that they're going to be getting, the new tutors, their abilities, things that you can probably expect from them, and different ways to counter them as well. Uh, I just kind of want to get into the mindset for preparing for these Megas. Sure, a lot of them will probably be banned by our standard rules, but it's, it's fun to prepare for brand new things that we're going to be using. And of course, Showdown has um, implemented a lot of the Megas and their abilities already in the primal forms of Kyogre and Grudon as well, so why not go play around with them? Kind of fun. Unless, if you're like me and you're trying to avoid design spoilers for the ones that are in the demo, um, you know, that's a little bit more difficult. But I'm willing to play around that if you guys are. In my, uh, in my videos that I'm going to be doing for the Megas overview, I won't be spoiling any designs that aren't in the demo, so that is what it is. But thank you all for watching this video, and I hope you all have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye, guys.